Hello, everyone. This is Fava Brooks. I'm so glad you're joining us again here on the Journey to the Heart. We are talking to experts and professionals about how to thrive, how to really take your power back and really reconnect back with who you are and your heart on your journey to on your healing and towards restoration. And I'm very excited to have a very special guest with us today, Deborah Rosman. Welcome, Deborah. Thank you, Svava. I'm delighted to be here. Wonderful. Likewise. So excited to have you. Before we go into our questions, I just want to tell our audience a little bit about you. You have a very impressive bio. And by the time people come and see this interview, they have seen some of your, your uh, bio, bio here. But I want to just touch up on a couple of things. Deborah Rosman uh, is a psychologist with 30 years of experience as a serial entrepreneur. I love that. <laughs> Business is executive, educator, and an author. She's the president and C and co-CEO of HeartMath Incorporated with HeartMath founder Doc Children. HeartMath develops, and we're going to definitely learn more about HeartMath today, but the company develops and provides health technologies, products, and services that transform anxiety and improve health and performance. Some of the things that I know our audience is definitely going to have some experience with. And you, among other things, have written dozens of books yourself and co-authored with Doc Child, uh, you know, some books that they you call the Transforming Book Series, published by New Harbinger. And the series include four titles, including Transforming Stress, transforming anger, transforming anxiety, and transforming depression. And I wanted to highlight those books, Deborah, because again, I know that our audience is definitely going to want to get to know you through those books. Very important topics. Like I said, you are also a part of lots of leadership councils, and, and you're definitely a, trans, a, a change agent in the world. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so glad you're with us. Thank you so much. So I just want to start at the beginning. I mean, I told you I learned about Heart Math. I've seen information about you out there, but I can't say I know it deeply. So I'm very curious, and and, our, and I know the audience will be too. So what is Heart Math? Well, Heart Math is both a research institution, a company, and a methodology. It's a practice by which we can learn to connect with the power and intelligence of our heart. And the heart really does have its own connection to a higher intelligence and its own intrinsic intelligence in order to transform our lives, in order to become who we really are, in order to repattern brain neural circuitry through the power of the heart. And I know that's gonna be a key focus of our conversation today. So HeartMath is a system of tools, technologies, research, methodologies by which we can really uh, align heart, brain, and nervous system to connect with our heart's intuitive guidance, become who we really are. Wow, that's beautiful. I mean, there, there's like a long list of questions that showed up over here as, as you shared that. And for me, in just the first question is like, how, how is it possible that my heart has the, its own intelligence and how it's so intangible that, you know, don't I have to like practice mindfulness for years to actually deeply connect with my heart? You're talking about something that feels very out of reach. <laughs> I hear you. Well, you know, it's interesting for thousands of years in all cultures, the founders of all the major religions you hear, listen to your heart, talk to your heart, follow your heart. The heart is your source of wisdom. It's the seat of the soul. You hear all of these expressions about the heart, which most people either think are metaphoric or if you get a little wiser, you know there's something going on there or we wouldn't be saying still small voice of the heart, listen to the heart. And yet there's never been scientific research on what is this. And that's actually how heart math got started. Doc Childry, our founder, had been researching stress for many years, as well as being a longtime meditator and connecting with his own heart and knowing that that heart center was a real place that opened up his connection to spirit or intuition, whatever you want to call that higher sense of source or self. 
And so he said, well, what is the physiological correlates? There's got to be something there. And so he and myself and a team actually decided to start a research center to really research the heart, the brain, the nervous system, see if we could see any changes in the physical heart and the rest of the body when people went into these different emotional states. And what we did for the first couple of years, this was in 1990 that we actually founded the Institute, is that we began to look at all forms of biofeedback to see if we could see changes in brain waves, in EKG, in galvanic skin response. And long story short, Doc one day was walking through the lab and he said, why don't you look at the spaces between the heartbeat? We said, really? And researching that, we learned about heart rate variability as a metric that was used in fetal monitoring. And when we began to look at heart rate variability and we began to see as we went into different emotional states, different feelings of anger, frustration, love, appreciation, kindness, it changed. And when we feel stress, frustration, anxiety, depression, our heart rate variability pattern or heart rhythm pattern gets very chaotic. And more angry and upset we are, the more it looks like an earthquake on the computer screen. And that's if you know you're hooked up to a monitor and it's a pulse monitor and it's taking your EKG and then showing the changes or it's taking our heart rate and showing the changes over time in heart rate. You can do it with EKG as well. So we looked at that and we said, wow. And then that research was published in the American Journal of Cardiology in 1995. That was the first time anyone found a link between our emotional state and our physical heart. When we're feeling genuine positive emotions like deep love, genuine appreciation, sincere care, compassion, kindness, the heart rhythm pattern went into this beautiful sine wave, this smooth harmonic, a coherent waveform. And we went, wow. And it reflected the harmony we feel inside when we feel those positive emotions. Mm -hmm. So that was really exciting. And that started a whole lot of research at HeartMath on how the heart then talks to the brain and body. Because the heart actually sends more information to the brain through the vagal nerve about how the body feels, then the brain sends to the heart. It was taking a whole paradigm of everything's in the brain and the mind upside down. And that is just the tip of the iceberg because so much more research has happened over the last 20 years, not only at the Institute of Heart Math, but at other universities and colleges and research institutes, learning that the physical heart actually has a little brain inside it. This was discovered in the 1990s, an intrinsic nervous system with 40,000 neurons that are sensory. So, and it's independent of this brain. So the heart feels, senses, remembers, and it was reclassified as a hormonal gland in the 1990s with as much oxytocin as the brain makes. And I could go on and on. That's the short answer. Wow. That, that's beautiful. And, and again, I'm like, wow, there's, there's a lot here. And just the fact when you describe that it's actually in between the beats, I mean, my mind was just like, you, you know, you didn't lose me there, but that's where I really got interested in, you know, the energy that the heart is putting out. Um, and what it made me think of is I have a heart murmur that acts up. It's interesting, every seven or so years, I I have to have it checked more, but it, but I also know it kind of, it tends to, um, to, to get activated under, under a lot of stress. And my doctor told me, yeah, your heart takes an extra beat there. So you made me kind of start to think about that, but then also if it's in between the heart beat where the, the that energy, the waves get generated, it's kind of like, it's not in the retraction, but the expansion, right? That the message from the heart goes out into the body. Am I complicating it? <laughs> uh, not too far. When you look at the distance between each heartbeat, it's not the same. You know, it changes beat to beat. And so what we do is we plot the distance. Is it far? Is it close? And you mm -hmm. want that 
variability. That's what heart rate variability is because that allows your heart rate to be go up when you need to jump up a hill or escape, you know, a dangerous situation. Mm -hmm. And it also allows you the heart rate to slow down when you want to relax. So it's showing the interaction of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system, which mm -hmm. are our gas pedal and our brakes in the heart. And mm -hmm. so when you plot these interbeat intervals, as they're called, you see a pattern. And the pattern actually affects how we feel. Now, what's interesting and what you said is, yes, the heart's putting out this energy, 2.5 watts of power with every beat. Mm -hmm. So it's actually beating energetically. Think of it as a radio wave how we feel into the environment. That's how we pick up each other's vibes. You know, when we're loving, we feel that from somebody, whether we're touching or not. When we're angry, we feel that vibe. It's actually an energetic, that, that pattern, that radio station of your heart is putting out. And that's pretty wild, because we all know mm -hmm. that. Now science is giving us a window to see it. And when we have a window to see it, we have more ability to self-regulate that pattern which then changes how we feel and perceive. And that is like a quantum leap in self-empowerment, to be mm -hmm. able to do that, to be able to interact with our physiology in a new way. It's different than brainwave biofeedback. This heart rhythm biofeedback is like our feeling state changes as we change that heart rhythm pattern. And that's the holy grail, because we all want to be able to feel better when we want to feel better, without having to take a pill or try to go meditate for half an hour. Actually, the core of meditation and yoga is learning to regulate the heart rhythm. We've just never had the window to see how it works until now. Wow. Speak, That's beautiful. Be meditating or doing mindfulness, you can really <laughs> interact and get to that aligned state. That's beautiful. So then let, let's, let's, you know, talk about the technology then, right? I mean, because you're and, and it just blows my mind that, the, that you guys have been doing this for so long and not more people I mean I'm sure in your world a lot of people know about it I'm new to it okay okay <laughs> but well, it's interesting what well, our strategy was from the beginning was to really work in healthcare systems and hospitals and corporations and teach people these self-regulation tools to improve health and performance even though all of us who helped Doc found the Institute were longtime meditators and have a very spiritual mission, we wanted to bring sky to street. And mm -hmm. so a lot of people who've been exploring personal development hadn't heard about us, although a lot have, because we've been in the trenches, so to speak, really learning how to language this for companies. Because part of the technique to get into that smooth heart rhythm is you got to shift your attention to your heart. And that can seem touchy-feely, squishy, even though it's not. It's very much a physiological state that builds resilience. And we learn how to talk about this in terms of resilience for the military. We work with the Navy, law enforcement. So the fact you haven't heard of us is probably because we've been in areas of the society and schools that you may not work with a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, the technology we develop based upon the computer and the lab equipment, we said, what if we could create a computer-based PC technology that people could use that would have a plug into their USB port with a pulse sensor that would clip on their ear that would have our patented coherence algorithm in it where it could sh show you and train you into that heart sine wave, that coherent waveform. And so you practice the techniques. They're what make it work and you get the feedback on the screen of what your heart rhythm pattern looks like. And the slightest change in feeling or thought will change the pattern, but then it gives you simple heart math techniques of heart-focused breathing and of intuitive connection to be able to make that pattern change. And when you do that, you are changing your neural circuitry. We find that people just practice with technology for six to eight weeks, just a few minutes a day, Things change dramatically in terms of health, performance, and well-being. So we then developed a Mac version, and then we developed software games that operate on your emotional control that went with it. And then we developed a handheld version called the M-Wave, Motion Wave, and that actually won the Consumer Electronics Show Last Gadget Standing Award, People's Choice Award, as the 
technology for stress relief. And that was in 2009. And then we developed a mobile version for your iPhone and iPad. And so it's evolved, but the technology and what it does for you is the same. And it's incredibly wonderful, whether you're an advanced meditator, because there's four challenge levels helping you to get more fine tuned, or a brand new beginner, just wanting to learn how to relieve anxiety or stress or depression more quickly by changing your internal physiology. Mm. Wow, that's a lot. And thank you for explaining that. It makes sense. But I, I know, um, hopefully after this, this summit, you know, our audience are very much people out there, you know, having some of the conditions that you mentioned. And, and I, I want to talk about that, you know, if person that's interested in heart math, you talk about different technologies and access, do you do, do you just reach out to you and purchase the technology or, you know, an app for your computer or your phone, or do you have to do it with the, uh, someone that's trained in leading someone using it? How is that? Is this a kind of a self-paced? The technology itself has instructions within it. So if people go to heartmath.com, they'll find the different products, they'll find the eBooks, they'll find training programs for personal use, they'll find programs for health professionals who want to use it with their clients, the whole spectrum. There are coaches that we have certified. So if people want that handholding, that helps with accountability to practice. But it's all about doing it. Mm -hmm. And the technology itself is self-contained in terms of the techniques and the training of what you want to do. And of course, they're in my books too. And so people can, can get that according to what their, their goal is. If you have mm -hmm. anxiety or depression or anger, the technology plus the book will really be all you need unless you want to coach and you can get that too. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. So let's, let's talk then about, you know, what are some of the benefits to like, let's say a survivor, a trauma survivor. I mean, I read some of the testimonies on your website, which are amazing. Um, but, you know, very often, you know, survivors, they don't feel safe in the world. Uh, they don't even feel safe to kind of venture into their bodies by themselves. Is there, is there a downside for someone who, or is it risky for someone to go to um, explore this healing option on their own? Well, what we found is that a lot of trauma gets imprinted in the amygdala of the brain, the emotional memory center. And then that keeps triggering and any input that is threatening, keeps triggering the same old memory like PTSD is trauma. But it can be all sorts of traumas from childhood to any type of abuse that can create that deep imprint. Mm -hmm. Four cells of the amygdala synchronize to the heartbeat, the pacemaker cells in the heart. And this is really giving you a direct pathway so when you are getting into that heart rhythm coherent state, what you're really doing is enabling the core cells of the amygdala to become more familiar with that state. And it starts to erase or reduce the intensity of the imprint of the trauma. That's why so many veterans, Walter Reed Army Hospital said that the M-Wave technology is the best thing they found for veterans with PTSD or pain, chronic pain to get them off of the opiates that a lot of them have become addicted to. There are trauma centers throughout the United States where health professionals are using this. I, I just co-hosted a webinar not long ago with Dr. Bessel van der Kelp, who's mm -hmm. probably one of the world's experts on trauma. And he explained how trauma and the vagal nerve in the body really mediates a lot of the communication between the body and the brain and what gets sent, set in trauma, but it, how it can get reset as we practice techniques like heart math techniques and use the heart rate variability technology. It powers you up. And whatever approaches your health professional or, or doctor may be helping you with or self-help approaches you're doing, to get in this heart rhythm coherence gives you a leg up in order to improve. So again, and a lot of people just use the technology with the techniques embedded in it that, are, that they self-teach. 
in order to take charge of that. And what you're doing is you're repatterning your neural circuitry by learning to reopen your heart in a safe way. Because when you've had a trauma, you tend to sh recoil, like you shut mm -hmm. down the heart. And you mm -hmm. don't heal until you can reopen the heart. Because it's the heart opening that allows the love and the positive emotion to flow back into our system. And you can have a coach, a counselor help you do that. But you can also do it yourself because it's a very safe way in practicing these simple tools to begin to reopen the heart and let your spirit come in. And it's really that that heals. So that's a very short answer to your question. But, you know, we have a... A whole heart maps interventions program for certifying health professionals and a whole booklet for health professionals and how to use the heart map technology for people with trauma, mm -hmm. trauma um, addictions. It's all the same thing because the circuitry's gotten tripped. Exactly. And, and it's so beautiful how you, how you say it because very much as survivors, we're surviving up here. We've disconnected completely from this part. And but what you're saying, instead of if, if using something like this, a technology, we don't even have to talk about what happened. We don't have to process, you know, the emotion and the, the, the whatever comes up with it. But if we can just start to focus on allowing the heart to drive the good feelings and to connect with the brain to to recreate this this access. Right. And that is. That's exactly right. It's the reopening of the heart and allowing the heart to self-soothe the brain and the amygdala and these centers, which then starts to make us feel more secure and safe. Mm -hmm. We reopen and reconnect with that inner security because conceptually we know, but the physiology doesn't. And so, you know, I have actually found, because I'm a psychologist by training, and I actually found that the more people rehash the experience, unless they're doing some kind of virtual reality and then doing some kind of live it and then repattern it, which is still tough. But in, when you rehash it, you're reinforcing it. Now, this is not suppression of the emotion. I really want to address that or repression. Mm -hmm. It won't do any good. It'll still keep popping up in the unconscious or subconscious. This is actually, and it's not a cognitive reframing, because cognitive behavioral therapy is very beneficial in some areas, but doesn't always have the emotional belief that is needed for people to shift that pattern and imprint. So it doesn't work in a lot of cases. This works because it's not asking your mind to believe. It's actually using your physiology to retrain a pattern so that you are then feeling different different biochemicals are being released, different communication of the brain, you perceive differently, the, re the left and right hemispheres get balanced because the heart rhythm pattern is also communicated to the thalamus, which is the center of the brain that synchronizes cortical function. So there's a whole different radio program, radio show going from heart to brain to frontal lobes and your decision making and your perception when you're in a heart rhythm coherent pattern then when you're in the incoherent pattern that is driven by feeling anxiety, frustration, or stress, you just see differently. It broadens your perception. That is not repression. That is enlightenment. Mm -hmm. well, that's beautiful. I really appreciate that. And, and you're right, because, you know, I, I went from viewing the world from here to a lot more expanded, open view of the world and myself in it ones I was able to feel, you know, safer within my own, within my own body. And, and I think it's, it was so hard for me to understand for a long time, just the biology of trauma, that it wasn't just in my thinking, talking about it, that was necessary, but it was really, you know, con reconnecting and, and feeling the the goodness of my heart. <laughs> right. Well, that, why do you, journey to the heart because you know that's what healed you yes that's what healed yes. however you get there however anyone gets there we're just trying to make the pathway a little more straight line and here's what you can do to reconnect with that and find that inner security beautiful 
So, you, I mean, in your world, you talk about being in the, the what do you call it? The, um, the wave. I had a question here that I was going to ask about that. Like when, when things are working smoothly, you talk about being, you know, you're operating optimally um, in the world, like in the flow. Right. I was, can you, can you talk more about that? Because I, I, again, it's, you know, to, to imagine it without having that experience, um, how, how does that show up differently in the world? I mean, so, so it's a really good question because when your heart and brain and nervous system are synchronized and we call this heart rhythm coherence because the heart's driving the process. It doesn't mean your brain doesn't have to say, okay, now I'm going to shift my heart and do this heart based technique. It does, but then that synchronizes, it activates this other center of the brain. So it's a positive, virtuous feedback loop between heart and brain. When you do that, your autonomic nervous system, the two halves, the parasympathetic and sympathetic, entrain. They entrain at this resonant frequency for the whole body. And it actually is the optimal state for the immune response, the hormonal response, for your sleep rhythms. It's your body's master regulator is this heart brain entrainment. So those states that athletes call flow or the zone, or when we feel in harmony, that inner harmony that we go, wow, how can I, I wish I could capture this. I wish I could feel this all the time. Yes. That is that state. And so, yeah, you're not meant to, we have life, we grow, we have challenges. You're not meant to be walking around in that state hundred percent of the time. But to be able to reboot to that at will, that is to me the greatest gift that I've received from heart now. And it don't have to even be a trauma survivor because after you help balance that imprint, then you want to perform better. You want to be more fulfilled. You want to have better relationships. You want to live life with more joy. And that state is your foundational baseline to create from there, to innovate from there, to do that. It activates the higher cortical functions. So all we've done, you know, heart math is inside everybody. We've just done the research to open the window to see, hey, it's not all here first. Start here, and here's the simple pathways, the math, the psychological equations, by which you can find more and more often those flow states, get back in sync, as we call it. Because with all that's going on in the world today, you know, you just watch the news and your own personal challenges from the past or in current in life, we all need tools to be able to bring our system back to balance. And that's really why Heart Methods, that's really the vision Doc and I and others had when Doc founded the Institute was to really find and develop simple tools that anybody could use that weren't based on any philosophy or religion or belief system, but really on how the human body worked in order for people to learn to connect with their intuitive guidance of their heart. Because when you get into that flow state, that heart-brain synchronized state, that coherent waveform, you connect more with that intuitive voice inside that guides you, that helps you see the best approach to things. And that's when life gets really fulfilling when you have that connection with who you truly are. And the mind comes out because the mind then gets to uh, fulfill what your heart directive is, is saying. Wow, that's beautiful. That just, you know, warmed my heart. So I'm, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you. Sharing this with our audience uh, because you know, my intuition is like, yes, 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 as I'm hearing you speak. And I'm so glad that you agreed to be a part of the summit and help the people that, um, again, to see, you know, there is a way out, there is a way through, there is a way you have a heart, you're good. you got a heart, you're all set. <laughs> exactly right. All we need to do is open it and make it safe to do that. Exactly. And so safe one step at a time and your spirit and the truly the love you truly are and everybody is can come forth.
Oh, that's beautiful. So, I mean, our, our time is almost up here, Deborah, but and I know you have a very exciting free gift for our audience. And of course, I know they're going to head over to your website to learn more about the different programs that are available there. But um, what can you tell our audience about the free gift that you have? The free gift is an ebook called Eliminating Anxiety, and it has some of the simple heart math techniques that we have developed from our research of how you can begin to repattern that imprint in your amygdala and your brain that creates an anxiety trigger and brings that up again as a familiar state and begin to create new familiar states. So this is the techniques, and you can use them with the technology if you choose to get that and really begin to reduce anxiety in your life because anxiety becomes such a habit as a self-protection. And we can take that off and start to feel more whole and balanced and, uh, and peaceful. Mm, beautiful. Uh, that sounds amazing. And, and like I said, the audience will find a link to it directly underneath this video. So just one click away. But before we wrap up, Deborah, is there any last, um, insight that you want to tell our audience um, about HeartMath and, and the products? I just want to tell everybody that the products and the techniques and the tools and the, everything we've created is to help you feel more self-compassion. You deserve it. Feel more love. Have more compassion and love in your own lives because that's what's going to heal you and your family and children and the world. And now people have the science to understand. And science is for many has become the new religion, but this doesn't negate your religion or your beliefs. It empowers it, it brings it to life so that you really can learn to connect with the power and the innate intelligence in your heart that everyone has. And I just wanna encourage you, have compassion and care for yourself because you're worth it. Mm, beautiful. What a beautiful way to end this interview. Thank you, Deborah, again. Really, really appreciate the work that you're doing over at you know, HeartMath and, and getting this important message out to more people. And again, I'm still blown away that you, you've been around for so long. And I'm like, wait a minute, where have I been? Under a rock or something? So. Well, it's time. Let everybody know. And I know that's what you're doing. Exactly, exactly. So I'm going to trust in the, the timing of things as I always do. I guess this was the right time for, for us to come together and, and bring this out to the world. At, at least I'm, I'm here to do my part. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And to our audience, thank you again for joining us today for another fantastic interview. And please make sure you don't miss out on this free gift from, from Deborah and the people over at HeartMath. So thank you. Have a great day. We'll see you next interview. All right.